So what we're going to do is we're going to install Minecraft Forge for 1.12. We're going to install the recommended installer for 1.12.2. We're going to wait for an add to finish. And once this finishes, we're going to get a jar file. This is where we're going to open up. And we're going to make it to our dot Minecraft. It should be there by default. Push OK. Push OK. Then we're going to open up Minecraft. Once you open up Minecraft, it should actually be automatically there. But if it isn't, you go to Installations, Add a New, and find it in this list. So we're going to push Play. I understand the risks. And then it's going to launch Minecraft with Forge. And there we go. Now that we've gotten 1.12.2 Forge installed, now we need to install the mods. Because if you click on the mods right here, there's no mods that uh, we want. So we're going to be getting a few mods. So let's exit out of this. And we're going to go to the Downloads Excel Spreadsheet uh, Google Sheets that I have in my Discord. I will be providing this link in the, the description of this video as well. So for the guns, we're going to get the latest version. And we're going to get the release of the vehicles from CourseForge. Going to go to Files. We're going to download. We're going to download the Immersive Vehicles mod itself. And lastly, we need to get Expansive Weaponry. I don't have it on this sheet, but we're going to look it up in this case. I will be adding to that sheet. So yeah, that's the four mods we're going to need. So what we're going to do to get to our uh, mods folder is we're going to go percent app data percent. Open up the Minecraft Minecraft folder, and there's the mods folder. The mods we're going to be putting in this one is expansive weaponry, the immersive vehicles mod, and the MTS pack. So the last thing we need to do is for the guns. As it currently stands, if we launch this, we will get an expansive weaponry mod, a mod folder in this uh, directory. But we need a modulus folder. This will be changed and you won't need to do this uh, soon. But open that folder up and drag that in there. Now we're going to do one more step after this. So we're going to open up Minecraft now, and then we're going to start up Forge of 1.12. It's going to give us a prompt saying you don't have any content packs installed. Now this won't be happening if you put it in the expansive weaponry folder once Warfare 44 has been ported to that, which it will be soon, but we're just going to push continue for the moment. So because of this, we're going to actually need to X out and then go into the expansive weaponry folder it just made for us. Open up the mod.json. You should be able to use a text editor like Notepad++ or does Notepad. Then we're going to find something called load modulus packs. We're going to change that to true and save. Now we can open Minecraft again. Okay, so here's our mods are loading. And we go to mods folder and we can see that we got immersive vehicles and we got expansive weaponry. Let's go into a single player world. Let's give these guys a test. Alright, so let's go back to the Facebook quickly. You'll see that you have uh, some arrows on top, which we can actually check. There's multiple boxes now. So we got all these guns and arm uniforms from the expansive weaponry. So let's just throw on something. Oh wait, this is a different uh, thing. I'll show you in a second. I'll just throw that on. 
And there we go. Got an outfit. We can also grab a gun. Let's say the M1A1 car. Got the ammo for it. R to reload. Right click to aim. Left click to shoot. And there we go. So, we have now vehicles as well. Well, let's, let's focus on the guns first. So as you saw, that's how you activate the guns, but there's some extra stuff that we're going to need to look into. So some of these things uh, require you to be in survival mode to use. So to make an outfit, for example, let's just say we want to do a German outfit that maybe has some extra bits and pieces to it. So let's go like this. And then perhaps we want a ammo belt around our neck and a gas mask. So we're going to go into survival mode. There's a little button here, but we're going to put on these first. This. This one goes into the vest. And this one goes into the neck. And this one goes on the face. And there we go. Now we got a uh, more customized version of your character with an outfit. And you can just remove it and change it around. A lot of these slots are used by different uh, items. You can just usually shift right click and I'll put it in, in there instantly so you don't need a guess. And now we're going to move over to vehicles. So this is the new stuff. The people that uh, used Warfare 44 in the past are not going to be used to this. So the way it currently works, it's going to be based on these three chassis. Uh, it will be um, will be more expanded upon in the future. There will be more chassis for different vehicles. Obviously, these aren't the three chassis. These are all tanks. So this for initial release, this is what's going to be. But for the main state, it's going to be based on four different parts. The chassis, the casement, a turret or a barrel, and additional parts. Or add-on parts. So you right-click it down, and we got a Sherman chassis. It doesn't look like much, but it's just the hole. We can go into creative mode. This does not have any craft recipes yet, but we can just go casement. We can have all these casements. Now, if you actually highlight over a uh, vehicle chassis, it will actually tell you what casements work for it. But let us go for the M4A1 Sherman casement. Right-click it on that green spot, and now we got a little bit more of a uh, vehicle here. And then in that casement, actually let's bring it back out, the casement says it can mount two different types of turrets, the M4A1 Sherman turret and the M4A3 E8 Sherman turret. So what we're going to do, we're just going to type in Sherman, and we know the M4A1 turret works. You can right click it, and now we got this. So now we have basically a full functioning tank, you may think. Well, not so much actually. So there's two ways we can actually get this thing moving. First way is actually removing the engine before we get started. If you open up the inventory and go into this folder right here, you can get this wrench. Wrenches allow you to get rid of vehicles, move and pick them up and put them to it in place. So if you hold shift, you actually can break a vehicle. Now this does work for assembled vehicles, for example. If I came over to this one and I'm like, ah, I really like this tank, I want to place down a few of them. Shift, right click, and now you can place multiple of them down. And the other thing is, you can break parts. So for example, I don't want this turret anymore. I'm just going to left click a couple times because it took the seat out for the turret, it took the ammo rack out, and then it took the turret off. So, ammo rack is another thing that we're going to have to cover, but we're going to that in a little bit. So for the engine stuff, what we can do is we can actually get rid of the engine. So this engine is like a typical survival engine. It comes with a vehicle, but maybe we'll make it so it doesn't require fuel. We can actually put a creative engine in, but let's get the actually right engine. Uh, here we are. The creative engine. It doesn't need any fuel, and it doesn't blow up. So now this tank, when I put all the chassis and the turret on it, will run without us needing to do any fuel. It's good for just to scan out. You know, WHD, Now, if we're going to fuel an existing tank, like these ones over here, for example, let's get rid of my 
stuff. Let's get rid of these guys. We're going to need a thing called a fuel pump. You put a fuel pump down, and you get some lava. And you right-click this a few times, and you'll see the number goes up. You can right-click it again with an open hand, and it'll start fueling into the closest vehicle. And if you want to stop, you can just right-click it again. So now at this point, this is uh, a tank that can actually start moving, because it has fuel in it. Sweet. So, next step. How do we get this thing firing? Well, if you look down, and you right-click, you kind of look around a little bit, you actually get a chest. And this is actually that ammo rack that we had there originally. So, this tank, if you highlight over it, it uses 75mm AP sh tank shell short. So we need to get that. So we're going to look in here, and we're going to get the short. The green arrow is means short, yellow means standard, and red means long. But it also tells you what number it is and all those things, but you can highlight over and it'll tell you. Right click and put this in. It's going to start loading it. You're going to hear a cue for it's when it's finished reloading. And there it is. So now, the way you fire is you push space. And that's that. But this might not be the best view. Maybe you're like, I want to get a little bit more of a sniper view. Or you want to duck your head in and you don't want to get shot. If you press U, you're going to get a few uh, buttons here that you can change. You can turn, put on lights and they'll have headlights. You can turn off the engine if you don't want the engine on anymore. Or you can push button up. This will actually put you into the vehicle itself and will protect you from fire. It's a camera view of in front of the turret. As you can see, the hole was right below us. Same way, push space to fire. But maybe this isn't still good enough. You want to actually aim, aim. So if you push F5 while you're buttoned up, you will actually get a sniper view. Now, this is actually a lot more accurate than a typical uh, view from just like aiming from the hip, basically. But a lot more accurate. Now, there is shell drop, so you do have to account for that. So it being a little higher. And try to get Bingo. And there we go. And that's that. So, now you want to play with your friends, or you want to shoot someone else. How do you do so? Well, we can actually take this tank and reuse it. Now, I believe it had ammo in it still. It does not. If we shoot in our tank, and it has no ammo in it, that tank will not actually detonate, because there's no ammo in the ammo rack. Now, if we load the tank with ammo, like this, and come over to this vehicle, put that ammo in here, go back to button up, and fire into the side of this. Without ammo in the tank, as it currently stands, they cannot be blown up. This might be changed in the future, but as it currently stands, that's what happens. Now, if you're playing with your friends, and one of you guys wants to jump into the machine gunner seat, if you right-click above the machine gun uh, in an area where there's a hatch, you actually jump into it and get its kind of view. And you can look around, and you have a little periscope view, but you are protected. You actually are down inside the chassis. So how would you reload this gun? Well, if you open up your crave inventory and get yourself 30 cal ammo, you gotta make sure it's the right one, not the modulus version. You want this one. If you right-click the gun, you can just inside the tank as well, but you might, you might need to look around a little bit. It'll actually reload the gun. You can hear the gun sounding right now. If you want to jump into this, and same button as before, space. And there we go. So yeah, that's that. So I mentioned before that there's additional parts. Some tanks can have additional parts. So for example, Let's look into the German Stug. The German Stug has a casement and a barrel, no turret. So you put the casement on, it's 10% zero, and then you can put a barrel on. But maybe you want side skirts on this. If you go into the pack, 
and find something called Panzer IV Side Skirt Frame. And you can choose between these two. Let's go with this one. You can see this green box that appears. And then from that, you can put another uh, addition to it. And there we go. You've got side skirts now. Now, more vehicles will have additions like that. For example, uh, soon, the Sherman will have the hedge cutters that would go in front of the tank to be able to push down hedge rows, and they'll actually function, just like these guys do function. These have armor, so they will actually protect you from uh, small arms fire, because they have a certain uh, armor thickness value to them. Well, anyways, that is all I have. I hope this uh, helps you out, and I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions in the Discord. I'll link that in the description below. Thank you.